Welcome back guys, back into it this morning. Uh, just getting a few more coats of paint on this stuff in the sunlight so it doesn't bloom, hopefully. Hopefully that's, that sunlight and that heat keeps it from blooming. Um, at the moment, I'm just measuring my belt size. So I want to get belt size so I can get belts in before I put my radiator in. It's just going to make things easier. Uh, so what I've done is just adjust everything right in. So it's as small as it can go. Um, I also found this. This is a alternator bracket off an actual skyline. Uh, this is actually an alternator bracket off a VL. The difference is the VL one has no real adjustment helper. <laughs> you pretty much just have to lever that out. The, uh, the skyline ones actually have this uh, block at the back of them and they use this duver uh, and that allows you to actually screw it in and out, which is a lot easier than having a lever. It means you can get them a lot tighter. So I'm going to change that over as well. So glad I found that, that's going to be good. So for the moment, I've just got to get a piece of string line and just measure these um, and then lay, that, lay it out and get a measurement. Obviously these are going to be very different from stock because of my underpowered high mode balancer. So that's why I need to measure them and, and try and get hold of some belts. So that's what I'm up to at the moment. Alrighty, so I've got my belt measurements. Um, and once again, Sort of hit a bit of a stalemate with it because uh, I really would like to go get the Pintara and bring it up to get the brake booster. Um, there's also the retainer washer and nut for the rear pan hard. I need to get off the, the Pintara as well. And I was also going to grab the front brake caliper bolts off the Pintara. But the other thing I need off the Pintara is the like pretty much whole undercar handbrake assembly from pretty much the handle right back to the split and the wires that go to the actual calipers. So it's going to be a lot easier to get that off while it's on the hoist. So I really want to get it on the hoist to do that. But uh, obviously I can't get it on the hoist because this thing's on the hoist and I can't get this thing off the hoist because it's not rolling because I don't have the right rack ends. So, and I don't really want to drag it up and just take that stuff off it, then have to put it back down and then have to drag it back up next weekend to do it. So bit of a stalemate there. So. Rex is coming home on Wednesday, I think. Um, so he's going to be home, so he's going to want the hoist as well. So what I'm pretty much going to have to do now, I think, is try and put the stock R31 rack ends back in just to get it rolling. And it's going to tow out like no one's business and it's going to be a real pain in the ass, but at least it'll be rolling. That way Rex can use the hoist when he gets back. And if I've still got enough time after that's done and it's rolling, I can maybe look at getting the Pintara up and at least just getting all the shit off it and uh, then it can go back down there. So that's the kind of work I'm doing. So it's not going to be that exciting. I'm not going to make a lot of, I'm not going to film a lot of it. It's just a matter of putting the lower control arms back in, trying to put the R31 stuff back in and then trying to get it outside. All right, so I started to said to start putting the front end together, headlights and infill panel and stuff. Red looks cool, right? <laughs> Um, so this infill panel and headlights and stuff, for those you missed it, came from Ian Dorney along with my diff and hydro setup and sort of bought a heap of stuff from him which was awesome. So yeah, it's starting to look a bit more like a car again and less like a big mess. I will eventually paint this infill panel but again, it's one of those later job things. But yeah, that looks kind of cool. So I just put my Rio in and just doing it up as well. And you can see I'm actually going to probably have to cut these off because they're going to clash with my intake piping off the intercooler. So it's another thing that's going to have to get done to grind those off. Right, uh, so I've cut them, just cold galled them up so they don't rust. And I decided to chuck the radiator in for now just to uh, get it off the bench. And what I have found is that I think the uh, power steering is going to actually be very much in the way. Um, of this this fan is going to be in the way of the power steering by the time that motor comes forward uh, Once it's mounted properly I definitely that's definitely going to hit that fan so Going to have to sort something out there because that's not gonna do Anyway another day building cars another problem <laughs> Never ends never ends. So anyway, I don't, know, I don't know what I'm gonna do there I'm probably not gonna bother to try and deal with it today. I think that'll be a later deal with it later thing so I've got the old 31 rack and tie rod ends in, so now it's rolling, so now I'll probably put it on the ground. I'll put my new uh, coil top strut brace things on it, and then I'll probably wheel it outside and wheel it over into the next bay, and that's where it can sit for this week. That way Rex has got the hoist when he gets home, and it means when I get here next weekend, I'll be able to just drag the Pintara straight up, straight into the hoist, 
and get straight into getting off what I want off that. And hopefully at that point I've got my flywheel bolts as well. So hopefully next weekend I'll be rev everything off the Pintara, put the 31 back on the hoist, put everything in it that I need, put my right rack ends, tie rod ends in, put my flywheel clutch gearbox tail shaft in, uh, put the handbrake and everything I'd pick out of the Pintara in it and um, really start getting this thing really sorted. I'm gonna have to sort something about that Vermo too, which is a bit of a piss off, but anyway, you get that. You can see here we have my control arms turned out as well with those little lock stops on them, so. Yeah, pretty good. Nice and painted up black. Can't see those disgusting welds. But uh, as long as they hold up, that should be sweet. All right, so that's the strut brace fitted up. But, uh, it's not too bad, doesn't look too bad. I've pulled the motor up, it's not gonna clash too bad. Should be fine. Um, I actually did notice putting it on though. The holes in the top of the plates are different sizes. As you can see, that one's a lot bigger than that one. So I guess that's just what you get with Chinese crap. But uh, it works and it looks a lot better black than it did blue. So anyway, now that this thing's rolling, I'll uh, get it off the hoist. Get it out in the sun. All right, looks pretty cool out in the sun. Loving it. So I'm still, I actually had to take these off and lift the coilovers about another 10, 15 mil again. Um, <laughs> because it just is scrubbing, like even there at that block is, is scrubbing on the guards. So really need to get the 17s off and get some 15s on it. Hopefully we'll be able to actually get some decent wheels quite soon. But anyway, it should look good once it's got a little bit of aero on it, about that height. Should be quite nice. Strut brace looks quite good. It's all looking pretty good. So anyway, I'll have to, I had to take the inner guards off obviously, so I'm gonna have to um, do sort of what I did with the Cressida and probably pull these guards off and actually put all the body loom up over onto the top of the ridge and drill it in so that um, it's not gonna get picked up by the wheel because once this thing gets 15s and I roll the guards properly, it's gonna have quite a bit of lock. It's gonna be quite aggressive, so. Anyway, big lock, little power. <laughs> Should be good fun. Anyway guys, that's uh, all I'm going to do today. I'm just going to drag this inside and have a clean up and then I've got to start heading back. So, don't know if I did enough today to actually make a video. So, this probably won't be the end of a video. I'll probably continue this a little bit later on. But, yeah, it's looking good. What's up guys? It's an absolutely marvellous day out here today. Uh, I finished work in Brisbane at 12. So, I've actually managed to make it out, make it out here with uh, a little bit of time left. I'm sick as a dog, so <laughs> that sucks, and it's cold as, but it is what it is. Uh, it's next weekend, I've got a fair bit of stuff on, shaving my head and stuff next weekend. Um, by the time you're watching this, that would have already been long gone. But uh, this is the last weekend. Well, not the last, but I don't have next weekend to work on the 31, so I really want to knock over, like, everything this weekend, pretty much. I want to pretty much get it all just about done. Um... <coughs> The uh, XL6 Turbo is in here at the moment. Dad's painted the bumper and spoiler over the, uh, during the week. So that's pretty good. That can go back together at some point. Rex is meant to be back tomorrow night. Um, and yeah, good old Skyline. So anyway, it's, um, it's been a long time since I've had time and the hoist has been free and the weather's been good enough to actually get the Pintara up here to actually get the stuff off it. So not wasting any time. I'm here on my own, so i going to take the digger down and uh, drag up the Pintara. And that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to start by getting everything off the Pintara that I need. Because I'm pretty sure I've got it in my head. Everything I'm going to need to grab off it. And then I'm going to put... We've got some R31 TI wheels. I'm going to see... Hopefully they hold air at the moment. But I want to put them on the fronts at the moment. Just because uh, this is ridiculous. Not being able to turn it. It scrubs so bad I can't turn it. And I don't want to do any guard work yet. I don't want to do any guard work until I actually get steer wheels. I feel like it's pointless doing guard work for wheels that you don't have. It doesn't make much sense to me. So I don't want to do any guard work at the moment. I just want to sort of get it on wheels where it will roll and turn. These ones are rubbing real bad. So that's uh, going to be that. And then that can go on the hoist. And then hopefully tonight, if not tomorrow morning, we'll be starting to really smash in. I've got the right flywheel bolts. So hopefully I've got the right flywheel bolts. So smash in flywheel clutch, gearbox, tail shaft. That way the motor will be sitting where it is got an idea for what to do about this fan, hopefully that works out. Then I can start on the exhaust. 
um, and hopefully start on, I can probably finish off the fuel system. I'm still missing my bottom seals for the injectors. I forgot to grab them. Um, I've got what I hope will be the right rackins. I ended up buying CE Lancer rackins, which fit the R31 rack. I'm just a bit worried about them actually being too long. So we're gonna have to find that out too. So, and then there's wiring. So intake won't be done until a later date just because I haven't got what I need to finish it off. Um, but if we can get it to the, if I can get it to the point this weekend where all that really needs to happen is like a little bit more wiring, some injector seals and an intake, I'll be stoked. So hopefully that's where it gets to. Let's get going, let's get started. Also, I bought some uh, touch-up paint, so hopefully it matches. I looked up the paint codes for uh, this color on the 31. It is actually listed as an ivory, uh, and I went to Repco and found a really cheap ivory can of paint. So hopefully this ivory can uh, matches well enough to paint that lip, and uh, so it doesn't look and stand out the way it does, because it's ridiculous. So heaps and heaps to do. Hopefully the weather stays like this tomorrow so that I can get some paint on that lip. Um, it'd be nice if the weather stays nice. That'd be really handy. Man, that's such a pain in the ass for one person, even with the digger. Just gotta pretty much skull drag it up. It's a real pain. Alright, so now just gotta get it into the shed. For that, I use the trusty old mower. So this is, I suppose, uh, one coat, two very light coats, pretty much one coat. Um, I did read the actual instructions on the can. It does say specifically on the can that it's not for use for exterior car panels. Um, don't know what that go is, but it's, uh, it doesn't cover very well. I suppose that's what you expect from a $5 can of paint. But uh, the color's actually looking not too bad. So I'm gonna let this <coughs> flash off and actually, I'm gonna give it sort of 10, 20 minutes and then I'll give it another sort of, another coat and see how it comes up. But it's really, it's looking a little bit lighter than my ivory, but um, yeah, hopefully not that, that difference that it really stands out much. That's all I'm really going for. I just want it to sort of not stand out like dog's dick red. <laughs> Never really been a fan of red on cars, so. The directions on that can also state that you're meant to use primer, so I'll be very surprised if that paint job sort of comes out pretty well, but then again I have been surprised by cheap stuff before. So anyway, while I wait for that, um, start on this thing I suppose. So I want to get the brake booster off this. I uh, decided just to use the Bintara 31 brake booster instead of trying to rebuild one of the S13 ones just because parts. Um, and it's just become a pain in the ass. So. Just going to use the one out of this Pintara, which seems to be look pretty well. So that I need to get the handbrake assembly from the handle back to where it joins to the two on the diff. So I need to do that while I can get the door open, get at the pedal, un unconnect, disconnect all that, and then I can go on the hoist and I can start working from underneath. The other thing I do want to get off this as well is um, the line for the carbon canister, because my Skyline before never had a carbon canister on it. And if you filled it over half a tank, everything just smelled like petrol all the time. Um, so I really wanna actually put a carbon canister on it this time. Uh, one for road legalities, because I do want to register it eventually. Secondly, because I just get sick of smelling fuel all the time. So I wanna put a carbon canister on it for that, those reasons. So I wanna get the carbon canister line. I'm thinking about actually just taking all of the front brake lines as well, because when Luke pulled the front brake lines out of this thing, uh, they actually sort of got bent and twisted around a fair bit and um, <clears throat> they're not quite fitting where they should be. So if I can get the ones out of the Pintara and keep them fairly 
um, I suppose <laughs> as they come out, keep them fairly sh the way they are, then I might um, just use them as well. Might make things a bit easier. It's a surprise Rex. He wasn't even meant to be here till tomorrow. Here he is. So this is gonna make for an interesting night. It's probably not gonna do my sickness any good. So anyway, um, I've got that handbrake disconnected. I can't actually figure out how to get the cable off the handbrake assembly from the top. So I'm just gonna leave it as it is at the moment. And uh, after I disconnect it from the back of the diff, I'll try and pull it out from the inside. And then I can have a look at it on the bench where I can see it better and work with it better. So I'm just gonna try and sort out a torch so I can get the brake pedal and booster disconnected. But um, I've sort of been screwing around with that for long enough now that I'll probably go put another coat of paint on this lip first. Alrighty, what a painful exercise that was. I actually had to destroy this brake line getting it out because it was so seized in there that even the tube spanners rounded the nut off. So yeah, real pain. But anyway, got it out. Also screwing around with it. You can see this one has also had a leaky master at some point. So <coughs> literally every single booster and master that I've got the master has been leaky, so I don't know. I'm just gonna put it on and run it. I just don't care anymore, I'm over it. And if it's a problem, I'll deal with it later. Uh, one thing I will do though, is cause the Pintaras were always just aspirated. I don't believe they have valves uh, with a boosted car where you're taking your brake pressure uh, from the manifold. Uh, you really don't want to see your booster to see boost. That's not really good. It's gonna do bad things for your brakes. It's gonna make them feel real bad. So, need to make sure you've got a one-way valve in it. I'm not sure that that's a valve. I haven't actually checked, but I'll grab one off one of the Sylvia masters that I've got so that I make sure I've got a one-way valve in it. So I'm pretty sure I've got just about everything I need out of this thing, except for the line for the carbon canister. I still gotta grab that. But our uh, booster's out. Got full handbrake link set up, everything there. Uh, I actually grabbed the speed sensor off the gearbox because they're the same as the R31, so I thought it would be handy to have a spare. Also grabbed the plug off the gearbox loom because mine, my gearbox loom doesn't have this plug on it. It's missing from when I did the 25 box conversion. Um, for anyone that's done that, there's actually a two wire speed sensor, not a three wire, so I removed that then. <coughs> <coughs> oh Lord, <coughs> sick ass. Um, I've removed this, so I've still got to try and figure out how to actually get this pin out to get the cable off the handle, so still figuring that out. I'm not sure if actually that may even still be in my car, I'll have to have a, have a look. Uh, I also just grabbed a few other things, just a heap of little uh, like uh, exhaust brackets and that. Um, oh, the pan hard bolt uh, nut and retainer washer. And yeah, I sort of just grabbed everything off the bottom of the car I thought I might want later on, just because... I don't want to have to bring it back up here. I don't want to have to put it back on the hoist. So I'm trying to make sure everything's off the bottom of the car and it doesn't have to come back up here. Because <laughs> that's really not what I want to do. So I'll have a look at this carbon canister line. Oh, I bought this infill panel inside as well. It's uh, not looking too bad, honestly. Uh, there's a fair bit of reaction in the paint. This is why you should prime things. Obviously I did not, but uh, I put three coats on that and it's not looking too bad. I'm going to leave it at that for now. I'm gonna let it dry off properly tonight. I'll fit it on the car tomorrow and check the color match, see how it looks. And uh, then later on down the road, if I want, I might pull it back off and actually etch prime it and paint it again. But it's looking fairly close. It's looking just a little bit darker. So, nearly forgot to get a very important piece that I was meaning to get is uh, these front caliper bolts, which do fit the S13 calipers. So they should work. So that was a wheels off everything job, <laughs> which is a real pain. But anyway, calipers are off, got my bolts. But uh, it is like freezing cold here and it's getting real late and dark. And I couldn't be bothered to go down and fish out the wheels I want to put on the front of this thing to steer it around. And then even if I could, I couldn't be bothered to move these around and get the 31 on the hoist at the moment. So what I'm gonna focus on now for the rest of the night is getting all of these chrome trims and strips and stuff that I pulled off the Vintara and uh, the mirror uh, onto my 31. Um, that way all of the stuff that is not going to get used on the 31 can then just get thrown into the Bintaro and it can stay down with the Bintaro out of the way. So it turns out these were all pretty much already broken but uh, you can see uh, these white clips there's that little white clip part right there on the inside of that uh, which 
is what clips into these. So what you do is when you peel this up just a bit, you can just see that little clip through this hole. So you use just a flat blade screwdriver just to depress that little clip and then it pops out. And that's how you get these off without breaking all of them. Uh, because I've, I've broken pretty much all the ones off the Bizarro, so. Anyway, I just thought I'd show you that. So anyway, I'll chuck the chrome on. It. So there I just placed all of the much less broken clips <laughs> into the chrome strip and uh, on it's going to go now. So you have it, that's one side chrome strips. Really hard to see on camera when it's under these lights. And this is the difference, this is the old strips. Which are black. So, that's this side. Compared to this side. And it does, they do make quite a bit of difference, I like it. Alrighty. Chrome strips under the windows done. And for the first time, for as long as I've owned this car, it has two matching mirrors. And it actually took me a while because I had to find the, the retaining screws that hold it from the, the back into the door are actually different on these strips. And I didn't have enough, so I had to actually find two and cut them down. So that actually took me quite a while to get it done. But, looking good. It's freezing here, we've got the heater cranking. Yeah, yeah. And the infill panel looks pretty good. As expected, it is, or as predicted, I suppose, it is actually quite a bit darker. Probably similar or closer to what the, the paint would have looked like fresh off the showroom floor. So it's probably more like fresh paint, 30 year old paint. But in any case, it still looks a lot better than red. And I'm still pretty happy with it at this stage. So that's good. That is nice. Just gonna leave it sit there for the night and keep it, leave it, keep curing for a bit. But yeah, it's looking pretty good. Man, I'm so excited for this thing. <clears throat> so anyway, I was going to look at putting the seats in, but it's just too cold and I'm too sick and I'm going to go get some sleep and continue this in the morning. So that's what I'm going to do because I'm just wrecked. So, so wrecked. 